Law Warrior Online, The Incubus, Overview. The Incubus might have become one of the clan's premier battle mechs if it had been conceived sooner than it was. Instead, its development came during a time of transition in the homeworlds. The Omnimech was clearly the future, but manufacturing capabilities evolve with all the speed of an assault mech. Conceived by the Steel Vipers as an attempt to compensate for their inability to keep pace with Omnimech producing rivals, the Incubus drew on the Viper's existing manufacturing capability, while providing it a degree of modularity through its arm mount. It is this property that makes it an ideal candidate for manufacture on ARC ships, as it requires less space for testing than Omnimex. Its ease of production makes it an easier design to encourage manufacturing partners to adopt. Capabilities At its inception, the Incubus faced competition from the then new Omnimex, such as the Viper. Its extreme agility provided a niche for mech warriors who found the more brutal nature of the Battle Cobra and Adder incompatible with their preferred method of combat. But as the clan's premier clusters transitioned to Omnimex, the Incubus was largely relegated to Salama units, despite the capabilities. Their supply chain issues neutralised much of the potential of the mech's semi-modular weaponry. Despite this, the Incubus was sought after by mech warriors who intended to claim a last few victories before finding death in a circle of equals. Battle history. The Incubus proved a difficult problem for any Innisphere unit that raided clan holdings. In the wake of Tukiad, brief shortages of Omnimex amongst the clan Talmans caused Incubuses to take up frontline duty for many of the heavier users, including the Jade Falcons and Steel Vipers. When Warrior House Ijuri raided Goat Path in 3060, the Viper Fusiliers still hadn't recovered to full strength, and a full complement of Omnimex, but the Incubus did manage to stymie the Warrior Houses' cutting-edge Capella mechs. Renewed production by the Hell's Horses in the 3060s prevented the extinction of the Incubus. More recently, the mech has seen much use amongst the Hell Horses' Mongols, where its more aggressive variants often result in high attrition rates for both sides. There's also provided a significant quantity of the mech's older configurations to interested parties, indirectly causing it to appear on Solara 7 and other gaming worlds in much greater frequency. Data suggests that sufficient female mech warriors are attracted to the mech's inner sphere designation to consider leaning into this trend with some targeted marketing. While they might mock the totem animals of the clans, many inner sphere mech warriors assign an animal nickname to themselves, their fighting style, or their mech, and this is an opportunity. Variants most known variants of the Incubus make good use of the archaic modular weapon technology. Its oldest versions permitted commanders to choose between the accuracy of a pulse laser and the brute force of a PPC. Other versions of the Quip and Auto Cannon, or even LRM rack if the mission calls for it, continue to be used to this day. A rarer variant improves the torso lasers to pulse models by freeing up mass with a switch to streak missiles in the arm. This version is of considerable interest to mercenaries even today. As much of the Inner Sphere is still waiting and willing to pay decades-old early adopter prices for XXL engines, we'll develop an XXL variant permitting the usual deep discounts without significantly affecting our profit margins. Upgrading the Incubus's weaponry and armor further amplifies the profit potential and permits multiple sales channels, even without any demand creation activities. Notable Mechs and Mech Warriors Mech Warrior Alex Seafox Captured from the walls in the late 1390s, Alex was quickly made Abtaka and became Alex Diamond Shark. Some predicted he would become a rice star in his new clan, but this was not to be. Alex's rigid adherence to the tenets of honour proved a political liability in his clan and also kept him aloof from his blood house. Clans Seafox and Wolf both expect a degree of pragmatism and realism from their warriors, and Alex maintained a recitude that seems more suited to a Jade Falcon. Now well into his 70s, his more intelligent commanders have found great value in Alex C. Fox's insights, and he's still able to best most mech warriors in his Incubus. Star Commander Athena Fokker While the bulk of the Nova Cat Guards utilised Omnimechs during the Revival Trials, one Star Commander retained the mech that helped her earn her blood name. Athena Fokker proved the wisdom of this decision when she successfully helped retain her clan's position. Her final accomplishments on Luthien did much to improve the reputation of her unit and blood name, as she succeeded in frustrating an entire company of combined mechs. She was brought low by artillery fire, 
but members of ensuing generations of Fokker Subcos continue to heavily favour swift, powerful light mechs in honour of their ancestor. Now for clarification, this read up again is from the Ill Clan Recognition Guide stuff and it's all written from the perspective of a Sea Fox um, marketeer, I guess? Just someone who's writing up these reports about the mechs and how best that the Sea Fox can, or Diamond Shark, remember, can profit from selling these designs to the Inner Sphere, for instance, or other clans. So that explains the profit margin bits for, for anyone who's a bit confused about what was going on there. But uh, it's a nice change of uh, perspective because usually these things are written from the perspective of Comstar and uh, even some later books will even use uh, a retcon to say, oh, uh, the guy who wrote this for Comstar got it wrong, here's the truth kind of thing. So there's, there's little bits like that they can do. And I like the fact that all the stuff is written in-universe from the perspective of you know, an outside viewer uh, who isn't a pilot or uh, a military man at all. It's usually an archivist, or in this case, someone who's reviewing models for potential um, sales or marketability. But uh, yeah, I've covered the Incubus before when it was originally added to MWO. I like this write-up for it as well, so I thought I'd include this one as a, an up let's call it an update. The original will still be there, but this is <clears throat> this is more of an addendum or some extra info. So and it's certainly better than what TRO 3055 could give you at any point in time. So the Incubus is a 30-tonner with the chassis LM3 Endo Steel Power Plant. There's a Light Force 270XL cruise of 97, max speed of 151, no jump jets. Armor is a forging FF01 Ferrofibrous. Armament is a single Calibri Delta Series Large Pulse Laser, 2 Series B 2B Extended Range Medium Laser, and 4 Series... 12 rotary machine guns. Manufacturers manufacturing plant SFF-TW2, primary factory on CSF Titanic Mobile production facility. Communication system is a ComSat-1 and targeting and tracking system is a Delta-6 sensor suite. This translates to a mech that moves 9 on walk and 14 on run with 10 double heat sinks for 20 uh, heat sinking. I don't think any of them uh, don't have 10. Uh, its head has 9 armor, 15 on the CT, 5 on the rear, 10 on the right and left torso, 7 on the rear and it has... No, sorry, 4 on the rear, not 7. Uh, 10 on the arms and 14 on the legs. For its tonnage, it's pretty decently armoured. Uh, its large pulses in the right arm, its ER medium in the right torso, two machine guns in the right torso, the ammo for the machine guns in the CT, and the left torso has the mirror of the right, so two machine guns and an ER medium. I always liked the Incubus, uh, except for the fact that people, some people say Incubus for some reason. I mean, it's Incubus. It's a fucking old word. Respect the people who created it all those centuries ago. But yes, the Incubus is a pretty cool mech. It's always looked kind of groovy. Uh, I I've, I've did forget to mention some of the artwork for some of the others in ones I've recorded before, but essentially these videos break down into the original TRO3055 artwork, which gave it this more insectoid-like appearance with the head. It had sort of like um, antenna that kind of looked like, you know, insect antenna. It had this little like sort of propos uh, proboscis bit sticking out the front, and it had a kind of jet fighter look originally. Then later on, they did a horrendous 3055 upgrade redesign of it for some reason, and it looked nothing like the original. In fact, it looks fucking horrible. I'm not quite sure what they came up with there. All right, no, I'll, I'll walk it back a bit. It doesn't look horrible, but it certainly doesn't look that good. It doesn't look gr like... It looks like a generic mech from any sci-fi game that you'd ever see. And then we've got this update, which is a great midpoint of the original art. You still have the, the, the head design is still relatively on point. You can still see where the pro, the proboscis was, but is now removed. And you've still got that kind of great little like vent system on the front. The machine guns are very prominent. You see the lasers, you see the arm. It looks great. And it's uh, the artwork here is really nice with the mech bay. Uh, sort of design uh, uh, around it for its its framing. Really nice design, uh, fun little mech, and yeah, it's had some good little variants uh, produced over the years. And uh, it's all you know. Funnily enough, I, I do mention that a lot of these mechs will be ones that I'll use for that I'd use as an enemy one or whatever. But to be honest, this this would be a, a mech that I would kind of keep rare because the Vixen, as it's also known, which is the allusion to the fact of like, oh, it's popular with female mech warriors because it's called the Vixen. I don't know why that would be the case. Um, I mean, you'd think there'd be just as many going with Banshee, because Banshees are traditionally, you know, female ghosts, but whatever. Um, I, don't think you, I don't think you can get male Banshees, but then again, anyone who's Irish who, who knows the actual proper, like, uh, folklore right up there, please let me know. Uh, but the, uh, the, yeah, the Incubus is... Uh, 
just one of those mechs that I, I think I'd use kind of rarely. It'd be this thing that you'd throw in, like, ooh, an incubus. You know, it's not it's not a trooper. I, I would suppose I don't get the impression it's a trooper uh, as a design. I get the impression that it's a kind of a specialized unit, one that's used by uh, more skilled warriors. That um, you know, encountering it then would be a thing of like, oh, this this person, you know, it's going to have a bit of talent to them. So, you know, be careful. Um, it's a groovy looking mech though. I've always liked it, and um, it was nice. It's nice to see it in MWO. It's a bastard to go up against, of course. The Incubus is a nasty little thing, um, and yeah, you, you curse the day you bump into them on the field because usually there's like modified builds, and those things are brutal. But uh, yeah, that's the, that's the uh, the Incubus uh, two, I guess, as far as law warriors are concerned. I, I guess I'll have to call. It. I might get. I might have to slightly rename. Uh, these ones that are covering ones that I've done before. But, uh, yeah, well, I'll figure that out when it comes to it, because I don't think YouTube will like the idea of two videos with the same name. So, yeah. Anyway, have a good one, everybody. Thanks for listening, and uh, see you next time. Bye-bye. <laughs>